Hi, welcome to Demystifying the DoD Architecture Framework. Um, we're happy to have you here. Uh, my name's Steve Dam. I'm Jim Willis. And uh, we're going to be presenting to you a, a variety of information that will, should help you understand and, and deal with this new version of the DoD Architecture Framework, version 2.0. And we're, um, we recognize that a lot of you have uh, backgrounds in system engineering and architecture, and may even have experience with the previous versions of the DODAF. Uh, but we also recognize that probably people seeing this for the first time and just trying to understand what, what is this architecture framework and how do I use it. One of the things that we've noted over the last two years is as the DODAF has evolved, this 2.0, we've had conference with a lot of uh, our friends, our colleagues at conferences. Our peers have asked us questions to explain things, and so we've had to actually look into how things have been developing and what the real intentions are. It really comes down to a, a variety of changes that we've noted over the last few years, and what we are trying to do here is figure out well, what is so mystifying about DODAF. So the purpose is to give you an introduction into the DoD Architecture Framework 2.02, and of course, uh, there, there are li later versions. We found that, in fact, that the, the ch evolution of the framework over time isn't that great. You'll find that many of the things you're familiar with, if, you're, if you are familiar with the previous versions of the DODAF, aren't, aren't that brand new in concepts, although there are some new things too. So it, we're, we'll go through both. So what's mystifying about the DODAF? I mean, most people say, well, gee, it, easy book, three volumes, I could read this thing. Uh, well, you know, first of all, uh, you need to understand what is an architecture. So a lot of people are even confused by that basic start. What's an architecture? What are we doing with it? What, what's a framework? You know, you got an architecture, what's a framework? What's the role of a framework? And we're going to talk about that. Uh, we're also going to talk about uh, why do I have to develop an architecture? It turns out that uh, there are DOD policies that require you to develop architecture products. They're still called products in, in most of the old uh, policy documents. Um, who's the architecture for? Well, the basic simple answer to that is decision makers, but you know there are other people who use them uh, throughout the infrastructure of DOD, and so we'll talk about that as well. Uh, does it add value? Well, I, I will tell you honestly, a lot of the senior staff that I hear and talk uh, aren't real sure anymore. And so one of the things we have as a challenge is to show the value of architecture and architecting and why, it, why without it, we're in trouble. Uh, in fact, that's the next question is what happens if I don't develop an architecture? Well, a lot of bad things actually can happen through the life cycle of your project. And so having an architecture at the beginning and doing a good job of architecting up front is critical to success of any major program. Uh, is there a way to make the process simple? You bet. And in fact, we are going to show you the way we use. It's very simple and it works throughout the life cycle. And I think you'll, you'll be very excited about taking that kind of an approach. Um, are there any tools? You bet. And in fact, the, the tools are critical for you to use uh, throughout it to, to have an effective architecture and be able to make the changes you're going to have to make over time in the architecture and capturing that information. Will the DODAF change? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, it's been changing and evolving over time, uh, at least since the, the mid-90s when it was originally developed as the C4 ISR architecture framework. So we've seen those changes, we've been involved in those changes, and have been trying to help uh, understand them, teach people how to understand them all the way through. So what's so mystifying about DODAF? Based upon the questions that we received, those that you just saw are representative of that. Pretty much everything is mystifying. You know, why does it exist? What am I going to do with it? And how do I even use it? So what's this course about? Well, I'm going to talk to you about what is an architecture, and that'll be the part one. Building on that foundation, I'll be discussing the DODAF itself and what it is. And then I'm going to come back and talk to you about how to use the DODAF, particularly a lot of the process and, and thinking about how, how to uh, implement it properly. And then I'll finish up by telling you the other things you need to know, the metadata, the other sources, and a variety of hyperlinks that you need to be able to access to properly use the DODAF. 
Also, at the end of the course, you'll see a listing of other training programs we provide that provide much more detail and actually help you work through it. This is a high-level version, and we recommend that you do access some of those other courses for the much more detailed approach. So let, let's give a little bit more of a background about who we are so you know why we should be standing up here talking to you. Um, who we are? Well, Spec Innovations is a small, woman-owned business. We've been in business since 1993. We've worked across uh, DOD and other, for other federal clients as well as commercial clients doing a variety of different services. Uh, our services include system engineering, uh, mostly at the architecture level, but we've worked across the entire life cycle. Test and evaluation, uh, software development, you name it, we've, we've probably worked in it. Uh, proposal engineering, we, we call that because that's how, how we help people develop proposals. And again, they, we take a systems engineering approach to proposal development. Uh, that's helped us a lot in our system engineering practice in terms of how to communicate better with a variety of clients. Uh, training, we do training in both areas, in the system engineering and the proposal engineering area. Uh, we've we've ha done courses for oh, well over a decade uh, in both those areas. Uh, and we also do software development. We have an exciting uh, set of tools that we're working on right now, and I think you'll find them very interesting. So. Again, who are we personally? Uh, I'm Steve Dam. I have a PhD in physics. I'm also an expert system engineering professional. Uh, that's a certification out of the International Council on System Engineering in COSI. Uh, I have over 35 years experience, really, of software development and system engineering experience. I started at Los Alamos uh, National Laboratory uh, doing modeling and simulation. I went to uh, TRW in Rockwell where I was a project engineer and our, my job as a project engineer was to guide the system engineers in, in, making, in creating solutions. Uh, also then I worked at SEIC. Uh, I was, learned a lot about system engineering and in fact uh, helped bring in a, a significant tool for that R&D 100, if uh, some of you remember that, that time period. Um, I participated in the development of the 2.0 version of the C4 ISR architecture framework back some time ago. Uh, that was part of the effort I did at uh, Defense Overborn Reconnaissance Office uh, as we were developing their vision architecture, which set the stage for a lot of what you see in net centricity today in DOD. Um, we currently do work across DOD, as I said. Uh, uh, mostly architecture work. I think we developed uh, three architectures last year and, uh, and two uh, concepts of operations as well. And you'll see, you say, well, that's, that's a lot of architectures in a, in a short time. You'll see that our approach to architecturing is very quick and, and very cost effective. Jim? I spent about 29 years on active duty. I retired Air Force Colonel as a result of all of that. Uh, during that time, I worked in a variety of levels of work from squadron level, operational planning and execution, all the way up through international headquarters. During that time, I spent most of my focus on C4ISR, and in fact, in my last job on active duty, I was one of the first people to actually you know, require the implementation and foster the implementation of the C4ISR architecture framework back in the late 90s. The rest of my time I've been spending applying things to system engineering and helping things in the C4ISR community move forward. My most recent experience has been applying that also, including the DODAF, for a variety of enterprise architectures with a variety of companies and a variety of defense agencies. Uh, my most recent experience was as a chief consultant to the chief architect for the U.S. Army's future combat uh, system architecture as well as its design uh, if to follow on to the architecture itself. I have enjoyed every bit of that and found it all frustrating and the evolution of this material and the application of DODEF I believe has its value and can, if used properly, add a lot of value to the development of your program. So uh, I'm going to talk to you about what is an architecture and uh, Jim's going to go off stage for a little bit and uh, thanks Jim.